الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يؤلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تبارك وتعالى وخير هدى أهل محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والشر الأمور محتثاتها وكل محتثة وكل محتثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وبعد فأريد أن بعد أن أشكر الله سبحانه وتعالى أولا أن أشكر الإخواننا هنا في ريتشمن على زيارتنا وأن أشكرهم على غاية استقبال ونسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يبارك فيهم في طول الأمر على خيرات وعلى خدمة الإسلام والمسلمين آمين I want to thank after thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praising him to thank the brothers here in Richmond for their hosting and accepting us as visitors I'd like to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Graciously to bless them and to prolong their life upon goodness and giving a service to the deen of Allah and to the Muslims. Today, inshallah ta'ala, in this brief time, bi mashiyatillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala wa awnih, by the permission of Allah with his help and his decree, I'd like to talk about just a glimpse would like to talk about very briefly the importance of Tawheed. And inshallah ta'ala, I will make it relevant to the issue of fasting. As the issue of fasting, Al-Tabarakhu wa ta'ala has connected it with taqwa. And the taqwa of Allah Tabarakhu wa ta'ala is connected to the issue of Iman and Ikhlas, which is belief and sincerity. And the issue of Iman and sincerity is directly an issue of a Tawheed. Kama qala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kitab al-kareem, wa qada rabbuka alla ta'abudu illa iyahu wa bilwalidayni ihsana. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in his book, the meaning in English, and Allah has decided, Allah has decreed, Allah desires from you that you worship none except Him subhanahu wa ta'ala and that you obey Him in being dutiful to the parents. 
wa yaqulu Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kitab al-kareem wa ma umiru illa liya'budu Allah mukhlisin al-hudin and Allah azza wa jal has also mentioned the meaning in English and I have not <coughs> commanded them meaning the human being and the jinn kind except that they worship me Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being sincere in the religion wa ala hadha at-tawhid ra's al-amr therefore the issue of singling out the worship to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is the top of the issue kama qala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala min jihati fadl al-islam as Allah has mentioned from the perspective of the virtue of Islam qala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kitab al-kareem al-yawm akmaltu lakum dinakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al-islam dina wa al-tabarak wa ta'ala mention this day i have completed this day i have completed your deen and i allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have completed upon you my favor showing that the deen is a favor from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not that allah azza wa jal we're doing him a favor by worshiping him and being in the religion but rather the religion is a favor from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and after that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clarifies and makes it clear to us that he's pleased on top of that nikmah that he's pleased on top of completing it he's pleased with islam is the deen of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is why the ulama of the past used to say al islam la tahtaj ila takmil that islam doesn't need to be completed because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he completed it with the sending of the last prophet and messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa qala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kitab al kareem kadhalik qul ya ayyuhan nas in kuntum fi raybin min dini fala a'budu alladhina ta'buduna min duni allah walakin a'budu allah alladhi yatawaffakum Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentioned showing the importance of the tawhid the importance of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purely without any additives without any shirk involved without any disobedience to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala without any bid'a Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the prophet say to them O Muhammad say to the people if you are in doubt about his deen meaning the deen of Allah that which Allah sent to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam then do not worship those who worship others along with Allah tabarak wa ta'ala but instead worship Allah worship Allah as the wajal the one who will call you back who will take you back unto him for the questioning on the day of your deeds being evaluated yawm al qiyamah and this shows that the tawhid is serious it's an important aspect that nothing can go without kama qala an nabiy sallallahu alaihi wasallam fi ma tafaqa alayhi shaykhan buni al islam ala khamsa shahadati an la ilaha illa allah wa anna muhammad rasulullah wa iqam as salah wa ita az zakah والحج البيت الحرم وصوم رمضان لفظ له بخاري وذا الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم هي منشن مبادي خمسة المبادي خمسة the five things that Islam is built upon constructed upon and if you were to look around in any facility such as the one that we're in now I'm sure you will find many مبادي many things that are holding up the structure of the ceiling holding the walls together some of them you can take remove them add put up different structures some if you remove them the whole building will collapse such as the tawhid that al tabarak wa ta'ala's messenger mentioned the shahada first then after that 
Tabamahu as-salat, as-salawatu khamsa. Then he mentioned the five prayer. Wa huma ma'ruf al-fajr, al-dhuhr, al-asr, wa al-maghrib, wa al-isha. The five daily prayer. Then the Prophet Sallam he mentioned the issue of zakah. Wa huwa haq Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, haq al-mal min indi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the right of Allah, that wealth that Allah has given you, that you give that wealth to those who are the poor. And then the Prophet Sallam, he mentioned, <clears throat> as it was narrated, the hajj, the pilgrimage to the house of Allah, tabarakul wa ta'ala, and then the fasting. And this narration is different from the narration in Muslim, which is the known narration where the fasting comes and then the hajj in the end. And Imam Hajj ibn Asqalani, the author of Fath al-Bari, which is a great explanation of Sal Bukhari, he mentioned perhaps this was narrated by the narrator from memory. So he switched it. Or that he narrated it by meaning, which is permissible to do the hadith to narrate it by meaning. Amma al-Quran falaya Jews an yarwiha ala ma'na la anna al-Quran bi ittifaq ahl al-ilm but the Quran, you cannot mention, paraphrase the meaning, Allah says something like this. Or Allah says what's, what, what means this without the original words of Allah and the meaning. Because it is agreed upon, firstly, from the statement of Allah, then the messenger, and the consensus of the companions and all of the scholars after that, that Allah sent the Quran down with the letters and the meaning. So here it is why the hadith is mentioned, the fasting in Ramadan is last, and the narration of Bukhari, rather than the fasting coming before Hajj, as in the narration in Sahih Muslim. Al-Shahid min hadha kalam, anna nabiyu sallam, bayyana shahada, wa huwa tawheed illahi subhanahu wa ta'ala, qabla as-salat, وَقَبَلَ الزَّكَاءَ وَقَبَلَ الَّذِي جَاءَ مِنْ مَبَالِ خَمْسَ That the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned the shahada first. This is a very important point. That the Prophet mentioned the shahada first. Before he mentioned the salah, before he mentioned the zakah, and all of the things that's in this hadith. Why? Because it is possible that a person, بَارَكَ fikum, may not be able to make the hajj. Or that that person, he delays the hajj. As many of the ulama mentioned, it's permissible to delay the hajj. If the person doesn't have a safe way, or that there's, يعني, amin fi tariq, there's not a safe travel path because of warfare or different things, even if everything is there before that person to make the hajj, they have the permission, the ruqs, the permissibility, the exception to delay the hajj. But he still has his shahada. For the person that barakallahu fikum is not able to fast, you have fidiyatun, that which a person has to feed. Or the person may be able to make the days up at another time. But however, the lack of fasting baqiya lahu shahada, baqiya lahu tawheed. But it does affect his tawheed. وَحَاكَدَ بَابَكَ اللَّهُ فِيكُمَ الصَّلَاةِ عَلَىٰ خِلَابِ And the salah, the same thing. Although there's a deep discussion and another side to this, there is the side that a person may not be able to pray because of the noob. Or he or she may leave off the salah. But the shahada still remains. Although, again, there's a difference of opinion. لَكِنْ إِذَا تَبَكَ الشَّهَادَ وَيَحُجْشْ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِيَّةَ مَرَّةَ وَيَسُومْ إِلَى النَّحَايَةَ حَيَاتِهِ وَيَزَكِّ إِلَى السَّمَاءَ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِ وَيُسَلِّ لَيْلَ وَالنَّهَارُ لَا فَائِدَةٍ فِيهِ بِدُونِ تَوْهِيدٍ But if a person was to make hajj, although he made hajj maybe a hundred times, or if a person was to Barakallahu fikum, fast all of his life until the day he dies. 
or he was to pay the type of charity that reaches the sama, the heavens, or he was to pray day and night, it wouldn't benefit him. It wouldn't be accepted without the tawheed. And this is the importance of the tawheed, the wisdom and the hikmah of Allah Tabaraku wa ta'ala sending all of the prophets and messengers with the tawheed. كما قال الله سبحانه وتعالى ولقد بأثنا لكل أمة رسولا عن ابد الله وجتن بالطاغوت نعم and we have sent Allah تبارك وتعالى mentioned and I have sent every nation messengers every nation messengers were sent they were commanded to tell the people and to exemplify the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wahduhu la sharikara. To worship Him alone without partners. To worship Him alone without kufr, disbelief. To worship Him alone without bid'ah. And to avoid that which is the false worship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Faddalana ala umam sabiqa. Allah has blessed this ummah over the other nations. One of them is the Tawheed. One of them is the Tawheed that Allah Tabaraku wa Ta'ala has blessed this ummah to maintain. And there are many ways you find this worship of Allah Tabaraku wa Ta'ala. One of them, as it comes in the hadith, Al-Raju fi Sahih, and Abi Harawata radhi Allahu Ta'ala anhu. أن النبي, صلى أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال أضل الله على جمعة من كان قبلنا He said indeed Allah has left astray and made air those nations before us concerning جمعة فكان لليهود ماذا يوم سبت so therefore the Jews took the Sabbath for themselves, Yom Sabbath, which is Saturday we say. Saturday, the day that we are now. وَكَانَ nasara يَوْمَ الْأَحَدِ And the Jews likewise, they took Sunday, which is tomorrow, for the Sabbath. While Tabarak wa ta'ala gave them like he gave us Jumu'ah. But he allowed them to deviate from that going to Saturday, the Jews, and from that, going to Sunday, the Nasara. ثُمَّ قَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهَ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ فَجَعَنَ اللَّهِ فَجَعَنَ اللَّهِ فَجَعَنَ اللَّهِ فَجَعَنَ اللَّهِ فَجَعَنَ اللَّهُ بِنَا يَوْمُ الْجُمَعَةِ So then Allah brought us, meaning the last nation, the Muslims, and gave us Jumu'ah. وَعَلَى ذَلِكْ تَبْعَ لَنَا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ And likewise, you will find the Jews and Christians behind us, like they're behind us, trailing us in this life. Because we have Jumu'ah. Then after Jumu'ah, what comes? Saturday. Then after Saturday, what comes? Sunday. So we're first in line as it relates to the best days and that which Allah gave us for gathering. Likewise, the Prophet said, this will be the case for us on the Day of Judgment. نَحْنُ آخِرُونَ مِنْ أَهْلِ الدُّنْيَا وَأَوَّلِينَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Therefore, on the Day of Judgment, although we were the last nation in this life, although we came after the Jews and Christians in this life, from the blessing of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, from the importance of the Tawheed, from that which Allah has given us, because of His favor, of that Tawheed, we will be first in line on the Day of Judgment. They will be behind us on the Day of Judgment like they are behind us now. And this is one of the ni'mah when we talk about the importance of Tawheed. As wallah, we're living in a time where the Muslims are leaving Islam, Allah musta'an, as they say, quicker than the nine millimeter bullet from a chamber. Leaving Islam. Any musibah. Ayy qalqala. Ayy fitin. Khalas. Yanqalibu. Ala wujuhihim. 
They leave in the religion. Wallahi. Allah musta'an. And we don't know if Allah is going to test us at our doorstep with that tomorrow. Or if that's going to be our case the next minute. Let's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala salam wa afiyah. Ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and make us safe. Wallahi, the issue of the tawheed, Allah tabaraku wa ta'ala has mentioned all throughout the Quran. And what will explain to you what is the tawheed? Anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about himself. Anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs you of about his names or his descriptions. Anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you about the day of judgment. Anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about the Ahlul Jannah, the people of paradise. Anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions about Ahlul Nar, Wal Munafiqeen, Wal Ahlul Iman. Those who are the believers, the disbelievers, and the hypocrites. Anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about the ahkam, that which is the rules and regulations in the religion. Anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, al-qasad al-anbiya wa al that which is the story of the prophets and messengers. Anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about his messengers, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in his book, fuhuwa tawheed. Then it is the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala awjabana bittiba'a rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Lama qala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala laqad kana lakum fi rasulillahi uswatun hasana liman kana yurju allahi wal yawm al-akhir wa dhakar allaha kathira. And you will find as the best example to copy, to be like in the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. No one will be better for you. No one will be a salvation for you. No one will be a guidance for you except the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For those who believe in Allah on the last day, for those who wish to meet Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and to obtain the reward, and they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala much. وَقَالَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَ فِي كِتَابِ الْكِرِيمِ وَمَا أَتَاكُمْ الرَّسُولُ فَخَذُوهُ نَعَمْ And whatever the messenger gives you, take it. Take it. وَيَكُولَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَ فِي كِتَابِ الْكِرِيمِ مَنْ يُتِرْ رَسُولُ فَقَدْ عَطَى اللَّهُ Whoever obeys the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Whoever obeys the messenger, pardon me of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is equal, it is like obeying Allah وَقَالَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَلَى فِي كِتَابِ الْكِرِيمِ وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِي غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَا يُكْبَلْ مِنْهُ وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ showing the obligation of accepting and taking the tawheed showing the obligation of taking the deen of Allah tabaraku wa ta'ala ذَكْرٌ وَالْأُنْثَى عَالِمًا وَجَاهِلًا كَبِيرًا وَصَغِيرًا عَرَبِيًا وَعَجَمِيًا أَبْيَدْ وَأَسْوَدْ وَغَيْرِ ذَلِكَ Al-Tabarak wa ta'ala mentioned this for every individual be it the one who's knowledgeable or layman the one who's old or young the one who's Arab or non-Arab the one who is white or black doesn't make a difference that whoever picks away, whoever decides for himself a choice, a religion, a way of life, a belief other than Islam, minhu. It would never ever be accepted from him. This word in the Arabic language, land, it carries different connotations. One of them, the word after it has to end with the fatha. The equivalent is we say the upper mark, the A mark. The second one, it is something that is totally negating that which coming after it. And lastly, it is that which carries the meaning that it will never be achieved, no way, no how, in the hereafter. Allah said, فَلَيْنْ يُكْبَلْ مِنْهُ وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ On top of that, you lose all your deeds. 
as a tabarak word to answer, for habit to ahmalahum, their deeds are null and void. And this is the importance of the tahid. Kama jafi hadithan, wa aslahu in the sahih Muslim, wa fihi riwayatan in the Imam Ahmed, sammahu hadithan bataqa, lamma ja rajulun yawm al qiyama. And this hadith is in the Muslim, the origin of it is in Muslim, and it's in the Muslim of Imam Ahmed. When a man would come on the day of judgment, put yourself in the frame of mind. As a person doesn't know what Allah is going to accept from him, from his salah, from his fasting, from all of his good deeds. As the Shaykh he mentioned this morning, Ujib, Allah Musta'an. Some people are amazed with themselves. He thinks he has the best worship, think he has the strongest aqidah, think he has the best of methodology. Come yawmu qiyama la shay. Imagine yourself standing before Allah Azza wa Jal wal khala'ik wa jami'an all of the creation. Allah musta'an. Ma fi shtimalin wala naki wala yani swatsu wala thaw wala shay. Like a person came out of the womb of his mother. Not looking to the right nor the left. Though someone be in front of you and back of you in the same state with no clothes, la your balloon. They will not be concerned. The man will be standing like this on the day of judgment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask him, Alaka Hasanat, do you have any good? A one good, anything? Qala la la wallah la 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 rab. Who will say, Oh my Lord, I have nothing. Allah will ask them again. Do you have any good? Do you have a single good? He will swear and say, No, my Lord, I swear I have nothing. Allah will say to him, Bala, in the kahasana, rather you do have something. Then the man will raise his head as the tabarakul wa ta'ala will call for a small card to be put on the scale. As all of his bad deeds are weighed, he's ruined, he's destroyed, on his way to the fire, a dhahir qawd. It's as if he's on his way to the fire from the hadith. He doesn't have a single good. It's as if his situation is over. Then Allah will command that car. And nothing will happen on that day except by the sole command of Allah Tabaraku wa ta'ala. Who will command that car to be put on the scale. فَمَنْ ثَقُلَتْ مَوَازِينُهُ Naam. Whoever his deeds on that day were heavy, meaning the good deeds. وَمَنْ قَفَّتْ مَوَازِينُهُ Whoever deeds of good are very light on the day وَلَيَّذَ بِاللَّهِ Allah will command them, the angels to put that card on the scale and it will tip all the bad deeds in the opposite direction. Thus the man will raise his hand in amazement and he will say وَمَا هَذِهِ بَطَاقَ what is this car? What type of car is this? Well, his intellect at that point is shot. He doesn't know. Then Allah Tabaraku wa ta'ala will have the car flip, and then the car will be La ilaha illallah. Kalimat al Tawheed. Kalimat al Tawheed. Kalimat al Tawheed. The word of Tawheed. And Wallahi. It's indicative that this la ilaha illallah is free from shirk. Because bid'ah is of two types. The type is just a sin. And it's still dangerous. And we'll explain why, I was, why, why it's dangerous. And then the type that has reached the level of disbelief. Meaning taking you outside of Islam. So this man in this hadith. Wallahi well, was free from these things. Free from shirk. Free from kufr. Free from bid'ah. In this regard. Hazrat Tabarakullah Ta'ala, he mentioned in his noble book, 
إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forgive you. لا يكفروا إن كان شخص مات على الشرك وبين أهل العلم أن الشرك هنا شرك الأكبر إن الموت and the ulama they have explained that the meaning of shirk here is the major shirk at the time of death وإن كان في حياته فباب مفتوح للتوبة حتى يطلع الشمس من مغربها ما لم يغغر كما قال النبي صلى الله كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم as long as the person is alive and he makes major shirk the door is open for tawbah as long as the sun does not rise from the west as long as the person doesn't take his last breath he can make tawbah so the meaning is not simply whoever makes shirk that's it but it means Whoever makes shirk and he dies on that shirk. Whoever makes major shirk and he dies upon that. Allah will not forgive. But Allah will forgive other than that. وَبَيَّنَ الشَّيْكُ الْإِسْلَامِ مُحَمَدِ بِنْ عَبْدُ وَحَابِ فِي كِتَابِهِ فَطْلُ الْإِسْلَامِ عَلَىٰ أَنَّ هَذِهِ الْآيَةِ دل على أن بدعة أشد من الذنوب أو أن بدعة خطير وأشد من معاصي ذنوب كبير من المعاصي أو كبار الذنوب شيخ الإسلام محمد الوحاب in his famous book which is entitled the virtues of Islam he mentioned this verse. And he said, this verse is a proof that bid'ah is greater than major sin. Not sanctioning someone to do major sin. La abadan. No way. But there's a reality here that not, must be coupled with understanding the tawheed. And that is, one of the acts of bid'ah is that you sanction something. That you bring something. That you <coughs> try to draw close to Allah Tabaraku wa ta'ala. With that which the Prophet sallallahu did not do. And this is a type of bid'ah shirk in itself. مَا لَمْ يَأَذْنْ بِهِ لَهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ It is a type of shirk that you do something to draw close to Allah. مَا اللَّهِ سُبْحَانُ وَتَعَالَى With Allah. That you do something or you show equal love to something with the love that should be given only to Allah. تَبَارَكُ وَتَعَالَى or that you show more devotion, more love and obedience to something that should be given that type of love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are those that make rivalries, competition with Allah while they love something with the love that should be given to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبَّيْنِ اللَّهِ And those who believe, the true believers, then they show the love to Allah more than something else. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُشْرِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَكْفِرُ وَأَنْ يُشْرِكَ بِهِ The shirk is a type of sin, but it's also bid'ah. It's also bid'ah to make dua to the deceased. To swear that the rain comes down because this and that and the third, the rain comes down. And slaughtering animals to receive barakat, blessings or protection from the jinn. And those who have died, kulla hadha tahta shirk, wa kulla ha nur min al bid'ah. All of this is shirk, and at the same time, it is bid'ah. That's why the Shaykh used this verse to say that bid'ah is greater, bid'ah is more dangerous than kabarat dunu. Someone drinking kamar cannot be compared to the one who goes and he makes tawaf around the grave of Bedouin. 
Allahu Musta'an. Someone who saw him in Khamr, Yashrib al Khamr, cannot be compared to the one who slaughters on the altar or to the awliya, the great saints. Someone who steals the lies, Wallah Billah, cannot be compared to the one who says in Jesus' name, Amen. A'udhu Billah. Bid'atun. Shirkiyat, Kufriyat. That which is Kufr and Shirk is Bid'ah at the same time. And we see from the hadith of the man and the example of Bataqa that Allah Tabaraku wa ta'ala forgave him. Kama anna fi hadith akroju fi sahih muslim an Abi Sa'id radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qala kana rajulun qadla tis'a wa tis'un nafsan and he mentioned there was a man, the prophet told the story about a person who came from the prior nations, he killed 99 people. And he asked who was the most knowledgeable of the people. So they directed him to a person, in one narration they said, Nasuk. One narration said the person was a devoted worshiper. In another narration, they say he was a person, he had a little bit of knowledge. Faqala, Hadli Toba, he said, Can I make repentance? Look at the Tawheed. The people of the book, when they talk about the greatest sins, this is the first one they mention. Thou should not kill. They skip right past. They omit it right past the issue of shirk of Allah. Therefore, this person who was the abbot, the monk, person who had a little bit of knowledge, he told him, La, there's no toba for you. So the man became enraged. He wanted a way out. He wanted to redeem himself by repenting to Allah. And the man shot all his confidence, told him, there's no toba for you. He became enraged, upset, and he killed that man, making it a hundred. Then he asked the people, Point me in the direction of the person who has the most knowledge on the earth. So they pointed him in the direction of Al Haqiqi, a person who had real knowledge. And they asked, he asked, pardon me, he said, Toba, can I make repentance? I killed the hundred people. He said, Am I? What can prevent you? What can stand between your heart and Toba? Meaning, if you have the ikhlas, if you have the sincerity, if you have the tawheed, you know that Allah Tabaraku wa Ta'ala yakfu dunuba jami'an. That He forgives all of the sin. But you have to repent to Allah Tabaraku wa Ta'ala. Toba tin nasuhan. And then Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala will accept. You have to repent. With a true repentance, then Allah He will accept. This is from the benefits of the Tawheed, the importance of the Tawheed. كما قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتاب الكريم آمن الرسول بما أنزل إليه من ربه والمؤمنون كلنا آمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسوله. نعم. As Al Tabarak wa Taala mentioned this in his book, all of the believers they say. And never think the issue of saying is voided from the heart. La. Yet the dumb and the qalb. If Allah is talking about a statement, كما قال عز وجل قل هو الله أحد. Say, O Muhammad, to those people, Allah is Ahad. Allah is Samad. And Allah is free from any needs of the human being. Yushmal fi qalb. Yushmal fi qalb. It includes believing that in the heart. Because the person who says the statement, حَتَّى إِنْ كَانَ كَلِمَ التَّحِيدِ وَهُوَ لَيْسَ فِي قَلْبِهِ فَلَيْسَ بِمُؤْمِنًا بَلْ هُوَ مِنَ الْمُنَافِقِينَ He's not a believer if he says any statement of belief and he doesn't believe it. He doesn't hold that true in his heart. Then he's from the hypocrites. And the ulama I mentioned, يعني المنافق المسلم ظاهر والكفر باطن That the munafik means you are Muslim outwardly. As far as we can see, he's Muslim. But in his heart, he disbelieves. 
And this is a problem again with the importance of the Tawheed. This is a problem again with the importance of the correct aqidah, the correct belief in Allah Tabaraku wa Ta'ala. Because there's no aqidah except that you have iman. And there's no iman except that you have tawheed. And this is why Allah Tabaraku wa Ta'ala sent his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Kama qal, kul in kuntum tuhibbun Allah fattabi'uni yuhbibakum Allah. Say to them, O oh Muhammad, if you're claiming that you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, كَمَا بَيَّنَ الشَّيْكُ الْإِسْلَامِ إِبْنُ قَيِّمَ جَوْزِيَةً أَنَّ إِبَادَ مَبْنِ عَلَى الْحُبْ نعم مَبْنِ عَلَى الْحُبْ وَالذِّيلِ وَالْخُضُوعِ That worship is based upon the sheer devotion and love that you show to Allah. Which will make you humble yourself, which will make you make yourself low in front of Allah and make you submit to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa huwa tawheed Allah azza wa jal, hub lillah, wa hub li rasulih. Love in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger. In the real sense of love, huwa tawheed. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to them the meaning in English if you claim that you love Allah, Tell them, O oh Muhammad, if you claim that you love Allah, فَاتَّبِعُونِي Follow the messenger. كَمَا قَالَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانُ وَتَعَالَى وَأَنَّ هَذَا سَرَاطِ مُسْتَقِيمًا فَاتَّبِعُوا وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا سُبْلًا فَاتَّفَارَقَ بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِهِ Naam, Prophet ﷺ was commanded, tell them, O oh Muhammad, this is Allah's way. Say, this is my way straight. فَاتَّبِعُوا Follow it. وَلَا تَتَّبُوا سُبْلًا فَاتَّفَارَقَ بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِهِ Don't follow the other paths. Don't follow the bid'ah. Don't follow the misconceptions and the desires. Why? It will take you away from the reason you were created to worship Allah Tabaraku wa Ta'ala. وَقَدْ قَالَ مُجَاهِدْ السُبْلْ هُوَ بِدْعَى وَالشُبْحَاتْ بِدْعَى وَالشُبْحَاتْ And Mujahid, who was from the ulama of the Tabi'een, from the ulama of Ahlul Quran, from the school of Quran of Mecca, he said, this verse where Allah means subal, subal here means bid'ah was shubahat. Bid'ah, that was the Prophet Sallam did not bring. Bid'ah, additions after the religion was completed. Bid'ah, leaving something being laxed in bringing or deducing from the religion that which Allah commanded you to keep. Shubahat, that which could possibly be right or wrong. Shubahat, that which is built on suspicion. Shubahat, that which is built and based on jahal. Shubahat, that which falls in line with your desires. For subal, bid'ah was shubahat. Kama bayan al ulama fi mas'alat al fitil. Kama bayan. Shaykhuna fi kalamihi al-imam Abdul Nasir hafizahullah Yani sabab kullu fitin imma bi sababa shahawat aw shubuhat imma bi sababa maadha shubuhat aw shahawat naam shubuhat jahad shahawat maasi and these are the two things that Allah Tabaraku wa Ta'ala sent the Prophet Sallallahu to purify the character, to bring the people from darkness into light, to bring the Tawheed to the people after shirk was their way, to rectify a civilization. And this could never be done except by the deen of Allah Tabaraku wa Ta'ala. This can never be achieved except that the person understands the importance of the Tawheed. كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في شأن الصوم من صام رمضانا إيمانا واحتسابا كفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه نعم هو بفاست رمضان هو بفاست رمضان why so I can look sexy girl I lost about twenty pounds أعوذ بالله So I can fit these nice jeans that I got. 
and my new sneakers, I can lose my gut. La. Because the doctor told me I need to lose some weight. I'm overweight, and now I have sugar.